Good afternoon. Um, one second. Ramiro, are we, is our camera on, on the Zoom screen? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> now we're go. Hey, good, good afternoon. Uh, this is a public hearing to consider a contract for solid waste operations, maintenance, transport, and disposal services. It is Tuesday, March 22nd, 2022. It is 3.04 p.m. My name is Carolina Mejia. I am chair of the board. To my uh, right is Vice Chair Ty Menser. To my left is Commissioner Gary Edwards. To Vice Chair Menser's uh, right is County Manager Ramiro Chavez, as well as um, staff members who have joined us here in the boardroom to provide a, a presentation. The purpose of this public hearing is to accept and consider public comment on a proposed contract for solid waste operations, maintenance, transport, and disposal services. This is a hybrid public hearing. Those wishing to testify have joined in person by Zoom, emailed in comment, or mailed in comment. If you wish to testify, please visit the Thurston County homepage online and select announcement of public hearings on the left-hand side. The information to join this public hearing remotely has been posted there. If you do not wish to testify but would like to listen and follow along, please watch the live stream through the Thurston County YouTube channel to help us manage attendance. Jennifer Walker, Public Works Director and staff will provide information on this topic. Assuming those on Zoom wish to testify, wish to testify, I will read your name out loud, or the county manager will read your name out loud. Um, I will read the names on the sign-up sheet for those who have registered here, uh, three at a time. You will have four minutes to testify. Time and not be given to another person. When you're called on, please state your name and the address for the record. The public hearing is now open. Jennifer Walker and staff will now present background, information of the proposed agreement, uh, written comments submitted, and any additional information requested by the board. Go ahead. Good afternoon, commissioners. Jennifer Walker, Director of Public Works for the record. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to provide uh, background information on this matter. The solid waste contract is a significant contract for the county. It has an estimated value of $200 million over a 20-year period and includes operations and maintenance of the county's three solid waste facilities, solid waste transport and disposal services, and handling of recycling and compostable organics collected at the county's waste, uh, solid waste facilities. For staff's brief presentation today, you'll hear from the county solid waste manager, Jeff Bickford. He'll provide just a very brief overview of current operations of solid waste. The Public Works Finance Manager, Karen Weiss, will outline the competitive process, uh, competitive procurement process um, that was followed. And then Wendy Mifflin, Senior Solid Waste Planner with HDR, will highlight the key features and enhancements of the proposed contract. And then I will wrap up the presentation with an overview of the written comments received. For the public's benefit, the Board of County Commissioners recognized the scale and complexity of negotiating a solid waste contract and authorized staff to secure solid waste industry subject matter experts to assist in the effort. Uh, Wendy Mifflin with HDR is one of those experts, as is attorney Steve DiGiulio, who is principal with the law firm Foster Garvey. Uh, both Steve and Deputy, Deputy Prosecuting Attorney uh, Rick Peters are here to um, and available to answer any legal procedural questions um, the board may have. So with that, I will turn it over to the solid waste manager, Jeff. Yeah, that's a little better. Good afternoon, commissioners. I'm Jeff Bickford, the solid waste division manager at Public Works. I just want to give a brief uh, overview of the existing solid waste system here as it exists in Thurston County. So generally, I just want to be clear on this, the waste that's set out at the curb and by residents and businesses is handled in one of two ways. It's either picked up by licensed garbage haulers, or if you live in Olympia, by the city of Olympia's staff, or it's self-hauled to one of Thurston County's three solid waste sites. These sites are, there we go, the Waste and Recovery Center in Lacey and uh, Dropbox sites in Rainier and Rochester. The Waste and Recovery Center is the county's primary solid waste disposal site. Besides the garbage that's brought to the site, the facility also receives yard debris and food waste for composting, as well as recyclable materials at the large recycling depot that exists on the site. 
Any waste that is brought to either the Rainier or Rochester Dropbox sites is trucked to the Waste and Recovery Center for processing and, and loading. So move to the next slide, please. Uh, uh, the waste at the Waste and Recovery Center is compacted and then reloaded into 53-foot-long steel containers, which are then trucked to a facility in Centralia. It's called an intermodal facility, where those containers are then loaded onto a train. The train takes the waste to Roosevelt, Washington, in eastern Washington, where the containers are loaded back onto a truck, hauled, then hauled to the Roosevelt Regional Landfill for ultimate disposal. Yard debris and food waste is delivered to the work, Waste and Recovery Center, excuse me, is ground up on site and then trucked to the Silver Springs Organics composting facility located in South Thurston County. Uh, the recyclable materials collected at the three sites are processed through a number of different vendors depending on the item being recycled. As you can see, there's a large list of, of depending on the commodities. So currently, there are multiple contracts that, with different companies that provide all of these services, and the idea here is to combine all that into one contract. And with that, I'm going to pass on to Karen Weiss. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Karen Weiss, um, Public Works Finance uh, Manager. The contract we're considering today is the result of a thorough, thoughtful, and successful process. And during 2018, the Board of Commissioners deliberated extensively on available options for expiring solid waste contract operations, maintenance, transport, and disposal contract. And in October of 2018, authorized moving forward with a request for a proposal or RFP process. And that was to achieve the following five goals. Meet the county's needs and provide best value to the residents. Allow for growth and changes in service delivery. Promote competition. Provide transparency in the process for a legally defensible procurement and meet the goals of community stakeholders, cities, and town. In support of these goals, the board also directed staff engagement of stakeholders in the RFP process. As a result, an evaluation committee was formed in September of 2019, and it included representatives from the Port of Olympia and the cities of Olympia, Lacey, and Tumwater, in addition to county staff and a county attorney. The committee's role was twofold. It was to develop to develop evaluation criteria for inclusion in the RFP proposals and to participate in the review and scoring of submitted proposals. To maintain the integrity of the process, all participants signed a non-disclosure agreement and were held accountable to the agreement standards. During 2020, the committee successfully developed the evaluation criteria for inclusion in the uh, RFP, and the criteria was built on the foundational goals and objectives of our new solid waste management plan, which was developed by the board-appointed Solid Waste Advisory Committee participants, represents the values of the, the county, ensures that waste is handled in an, and disposed of in an environmentally sensitive manner, and in a, is a balance of operational needs, sustainability goals, and price considerations. Also during 2019 and 2020, the RFP and draft contract were developed in consultation with the best in industry subject matter experts, which Jennifer mentioned, including Wendy Mifflin from HDR and Steve DiGiulio, who are with us today, as well as input from the Solid Waste Advisory Committee. As an additional step to ensure the best possible RFP process and identify any major flaws with the RFP, a 60-day proposal pre-review process was also authorized by the board from September to November of 2020, and this provided potential proposers the, the opportunity to review and provide input on the draft contract and RFP, and revisions were made accordingly as appropriate. So with board approval, the final RFP was released on January 13th of 2021. On April 8th of 2021, three respons pr responsive proposals were received. And during the uh, ensuing evaluation period, the evaluation committee reviewed the proposals extensively. They issued requests for proposal clarifications, and they scheduled site visits and interviews with the two leading proposers. Each proposal was then scored based on the published evaluation criteria. And on May 21st of 2021, the evaluation committee convened to compile the scoring results and rank the proposals based on the aggregate scores. A consensus recommendation was achieved on the highest scoring proposer and was pro uh, 
provided to the board. And on June 29th of 2021, the Board of Commissioners passed Resolution 16041, directing staff to begin contract negotiations with the higher scoring proposer, Republic Services. Those contract negotiations took place from July through November of 2021 and resulted in a successful outcome in the draft contract we're currently under consideration. This contract achieves those goals that were set forth by the board at the beginning of the RFP process as transparent and legally defensible process, cost advantageous through competition. It provides the best value to the county and the community. It meets current operational needs as well as allowing for future growth and it incorporates the goals and objectives of our county and community partners, including sustainability and environmental values. As for next steps, with approval and award of this contract, the county would enter a transition period with Republic Services to prepare for commencement of operations beginning May 1st of 2023. And with that, I will pass it to Wendy Mifflin, who will provide an overview of the contract. Thank you, Karen. Good afternoon, board members. It's a pleasure to see all of you in person today. For the record, my name is Wendy Mifflin, and I'm a project manager with HDR Engineering out of Bellevue, Washington. Your board of county commissioners have before you for consideration the proposed contract between Thurston County and Republic Services. The contract for solid waste operations, maintenance, transport, and disposal services has a lot of unique features that um, we will provide testimony on today. The contract was prepared by a team, as Jennifer and Karen both said, with HDR participating, Foster Garvey, the law firm participating, and county staff. And as Karen stated, the contract was vetted through a very thorough proposal process, including an evaluation committee and potential proposers prior to release of the, the proposal in the proposal process. In addition, three proposers also reviewed the contract and provided comments in the proposal process. The overall contract provides clarity for solid waste operations, maintenance, transport, and disposal to Thurston County and the ratepayers through an establishment of the most current good industry practices for generally recognized and accepted solid waste management practices in the Pacific Northwest. And so with that, I'm going to provide a high-level review of the contract features to provide some clarity both to the board and the participants today. And so if I can direct your attention to the um, proposed Republic material flow chart that is on the screen, you will see, as Jeff stated, the county has three facilities which are outlined in the middle of the flow chart, the Waste and Recovery Center or the WARC, which is your main transfer station facility in the county, and then two drop box sites, both the Rainier and Rochester drop box site. Once materials flow into those facilities from Rainier and Rochester, they will go back to the WARC for um, placement into containers or to go into the recycling process. And so you will see on the left of the slide the proposed recycling outlets that Republic has um, given as part of their contract proposal to the county. They are proposing that recyclables and glass will go through the Republic MRF, which is located up in Seattle. They are proposing organics to go to Brady Trucking and Landscaping. LNS Tire will handle the tires for recycling. Sutter Metals will handle scrap metal and white goods and the dark container system for styrofoam. In addition, once materials go to the waste and recovery facility, any um, municipal solid waste will be placed in containers, the same as you currently do, and they will go to the Centralia Intermodal Facility and go to the Roosevelt Regional Landfill for final disposal. So with that, there are some enhanced contract features that I'd like to go over today. And so first, the county considered a number of things in the proposal process. First was sustainability, which was an, a very important um, item for consideration for the county and came through loud and clear in the solid waste management process, solid waste management planning process, and also through the evaluation committee and the SWAC. The county also considered the method of approach that would be utilized as part of the contract and, of course, value and cost. So with that, under sustainability, there are some enhanced contract features that I would like to bring to your attention today. 
The first one is that with this contract, the county will dispose of municipal solid waste at a state of the art landfill. Sorry. With leachate management and gas to energy technology. In addition, recyclables will be processed through a material recovery facility with optical sorters that will improve the quality and value of materials sorted for market. Organics will continue to be composted to reduce carbon emissions and improve soil quality throughout the state. Facility, a facility condition assessment at the start and the end of the contract and regular conditions walkthroughs and inspections will protect the county infrastructure. The county has a large investment in infrastructure, not only at the work, but at the Rainier and Rochester drop box sites. The company will also provide new rolling stock equipment for operations um, with industry accepted sustainability features, and they will incorporate sustainability objectives from the th current Thurston County Solid Waste Management Plan that was just finalized in 2021. For the method of approach, the company will provide additional container capacity at the work to allow for two days of storage in year one and two at the site, and then in year three, container capacity will allow for three days of storage, which will certainly help as population growth happens in the county. Um, value added at the transfer station. There will be clearly re defined responsibilities to the company under the contract to ensure the safety and security of the transfer station. Also, they will pay for all utilities necessary for their operations at the transfer station. They will provide the county with traffic control, leachate monitoring, and maintain the grounds at your work facility. And they will also maximize recycling of materials through waste screening at your transfer station. Value added at the Dropbox sites includes additional safety and security at your sites. They will provide traffic control and they will maintain the grounds at your sites as well. They will provide two employees at each drop box site, which is of course a new option for the county. One to monitor waste and compact in the drop boxes and one who will be responsible for maintaining and monitoring the recycling areas. Under value and cost, as Karen stated, there will be a lower total annual service cost compared to current contracts. So the county is estimated to save over a million dollars a year with the incorporation and completion of this contract. There will be a simplified comprehensive fee and billing structure. Um, so going to one vendor contract rather than the multiple vendors that you currently have now. Another cost savings measure will be the establishment of minimum and maximum contract adjust adjustment factors. So the contract has a minimum of two and a half percent and a maximum of three percent that the county will see a number of savings over the years. Um, if you're looking at CPIs right now, you're looking at six percent. This contract will guarantee between a two and a half to three percent. There was a 10 year initial term with mutual renewal extension options for one or more extensions of 10 years each. And it will also establish the process for the intention to renew 36 months in advance of um, the contract expiring. And the company will be responsible for up to $50,000 per year of major rebuilds or replacements for certain specified fixed equipment and structures. The county has a compactor on site that's a very expensive piece of equipment, and this will allow for $50,000 for that replacement of the tipping floor, looking at your leachate monitoring and um, lower base scales. So with that, this completes my portion of, their, of the presentation, and I think I'm turning it back over to Jennifer. And we're done with the PowerPoint, thank you. Um, we received two written comments, um, both in support of the contract being considered, one from the Board of County Commissioners of Clitatat County, and the other from Mason County Commissioner Kevin Schutte. And with that, that concludes our background information. Thank you. Uh, questions from the commissioners? Um, Commissioner Edwards? Uh, yes, I have a couple of questions. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm probably known for being skeptical, but I want to take a moment before I ask those questions uh, to commend staff 
Uh, and I guess that would be from Karen on down to everybody, SWAC and the staff at hand here. I spent some time looking at that contract and uh, it's almost one of those things that's like it's too good to be true. And I, I, I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm saying that in a positive way because I think a lot of thought went into that. Uh, and one thing that I am concerned about though is why the current vendor, and I doubt that you could answer this question, uh, came in so much higher, you know, and they've been doing it for 20 years. And so it kind of scares me when somebody comes in with, tells us that we've got a uh, million dollar savings potentially every year. So I'm hoping that obviously pans out. And my question would be, are we going to be able to reduce uh, rates to the rate payers, the uh, citizens of Thurston County, or at least hold them down uh, because we're doing better? I, I take it we're more efficient in these new uh, potential operations as we move forward. So I'm trying to figure out how that all works. So not to scare you more, Commissioner, um, <laughs> But based off of our calculations using 2021 tonnages, the new contract would actually save us $2 million this year. That makes me double nervous, but keep going. Um, <laughs> and uh, we anticipate that because of the uh, reduction in costs that we will not be moving forward, that will have an impact on rates and we will not be increasing, um, but we are doing a, a rate study on that as well. But we do not anticipate that rates will be increased. And, and then there's something in there about, I don't know, more than a, something more than a 3% increase each year uh, is allowed. And I don't know, that adds up to what, 30, better than 30% in the course of a 10-year cycle. So is that kind of to cover inflationary issues, cost to doing business? Uh, and again, that makes me nervous because I think inflation is going to be hitting 10% here pretty quick for this year. So I, I hope it levels out. But Well, I think um, having the min and the max interest rates, uh, um, inflation rates is what is um, in part what Wendy went, referenced when she said right now uh, rose to 6.5% for 2022. And so by having those min and max, we're actually mitigating that that risk. Karen, do you want to add anything to that or is that? So, yes, I mean, I think it's risk shared, right? I mean, that's yeah. the way I would look at it. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry about that, Karen. Oh, excuse me, Karen, Karen Weiss. So I think that's risk shared by both participants in the agreement, right? We have a minimum of a two, um, what's two and a half percent uh, increase. Um, some years probably may not have a two and a half percent increase in costs. Um, and other years, we would have far more than that with the maximum of the three percent. So that was, um, you know, a very valuable, uh, provides predictability for the county to know that our cost increases will be somewhere between those two ranges, as well as for our partner, Republic Services. How about, uh, do you have any idea when it comes to uh, electrical production, what we're going to get out of this? I mean, I've kind of been an advocate for looking at converting, you know, garbage to power. Uh, do we have any rough idea what we get from this over at Roosevelt? I mean, is it power? Two homes, seven Leave homes it to you, Commissioner, city. to ask me that. I, actually, well, I didn't want to put you on the spot. I just, I'm kind of curious because. Uh, <laughs> just, <laughs> let me let me consult with my team. <laughs> so, That's what it takes is a good team to make it happen. Well, I don't That's want to speak sure. on behalf of Roosevelt, but they um, generate electricity that they sell to Clickitat County PUD, which powers homes. And correct me if I'm wrong, 30,000? Renewable natural gas. And we generate 20, the equivalent of 20 million gallons of gasoline. 20 million gallons of gasoline that they generate. 
at, at that site, not just on Thurston yes. counties, but. Uh, we need to capture the, the, the answer. So if anybody provides a, a response to the commissioners, they need to come to the podium, please. Okay, well, I'll quit bugging them so much yeah. and they can maybe get on with doing business. But I, I do want to say, uh, I've spent some time with staff, asking staff, what about this, what about that? I'm not going to say anything about that in public because I don't want anybody backing out of this deal. So <laughs> we'll let it go with that for now. Commissioner Metzler, questions? I have, I think, a simpler question is probably for Wendy. You mentioned municipal solid waste as a term. And can you define that? Because when we mean, for us, municipal means versus unincorporated county, and I don't think that's what you mean in this context. So can you just explain what municipal solid waste means? Yes, so municipal solid waste is a term used in Washington State and the nation to define the solid waste that you accept through your facilities for disposal and includes such things as you know curbside garbage, self-haul garbage, industrial waste, some swill materials, um, some organics, just pretty much whatever you accept through your facilities. That's the definition at the state level. So it could come from Rochester and it's yes. municipal solid waste. Yes, anything in the county. Just wanted to clarify that. Thank yes. you. Thank you. And I, I don't have questions, but I want to um, give staff uh, great kudos. We've had a lot of conversations in regards to this contract and they've been really patient with all of us as we've walked through uh, step by step of the process. So again, uh, a lot of kudos to staff uh, for this process and, and all the work you did on it. Commissioner Edwards, did you have? Uh, I just have one more quick question. And that is about a month ago, we were given the contract to review. And has there been any changes in that contract that we reviewed? No substantive changes, no. Okay. Commissioner spent hours and hours in various sessions with this, so for the public's benefit. <laughs> um, okay, with that, we'll move on to public testimony. And I have the list here for uh, the people in the boardroom. Uh, we will start off with uh, Michael Studman, and I have uh, Renee Radcliffe Sinclair on standby. So. All right, thank you, commissioners, for having me. I'm Michael Stedman. I reside at 6402 37th Lane, southeast in Lacey, Washington. Um, so as a former past chair of the Solid Waste Advisory Committee, I would like to congratulate county staff on a thorough and most important transparent process. Um, the contract and RFP process is a huge success story, and by combining all the contract under one partner, our community, is, uh, our community is saving nearly a million dollars or $2 million annually. I know this commission is focused on fiscal accountability and all, the, you should, all of you should be proud of the work that staff did to save ratepayers millions of dollars uh, over the uh, course of the first 10 years of this contract. I have personally traveled and toured Roosevelt Landfill on two separate occasions. The first time was was when uh, the PUD uh, generated electricity and more recently uh, the renewable natural gas facility. The public-private partnership the Republic and the PUD uh, has is not only, uh, it, it benefits the ratepayers of in Klittitak County, but also is a huge benefit of our, of our environment. They capture nearly 90% of the gas that is generated and uh, returns to the uh, and returns it to the county as natural gas that Puget Sound Energy utilizes for its residents. As a union member, I value the fact that Republic employs nearly 200 union or, or 200 union jobs in a very rural county uh, in Washington, and their starting salaries are nearly 20% more than their competitor, competitive landfills in Oregon. This is a great contract. It is good for our community, and it's an amazing uh, for environmental uh, services. Uh, I would again like to congr congr congratulate Jennifer and the entire team on the Solid Waste Division on the job well done. And I, wouldn't, I, I would uh, also like to thank uh, members of the SWAC, the Solid Waste Committee that I chaired. Um, and I also vice chaired uh, a couple terms. We have another uh, chair that was chaired um, before me, I believe. And uh, this is a great contract. I believe that people win because the process was fair, it was thorough, and was transparent. I thank you for your time. Thank you. 
Uh, Renee Radcliffe Sinclair, and on standby, I have Evan Brady. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the commission. My name is Renee Radcliffe Sinclair, and I serve as a citizen representative on the Solid Waste Advisory Committee from District 3. Thank you for giving me that opportunity, and I currently serve as the chair of that committee. My first comments today are directed specifically toward the request for proposal process as it relates to the county's overall mission and the solid waste management plan. Um, and you're going to be thrilled to hear that everything I was going to say has already been said by your staff. So um, this is a repeat for you. Uh, I want to talk uh, about the solid waste management plan for just a moment. And uh, in doing so, I'd like your indulgence in reading the mission of that plan. It reads, Thurston County and the participating jurisdictions provide citizens with efficient, reliable, and affordable solid waste collection, handling, recycling, and disposal services in order to improve quality of life while protecting and preserving human health, environmental quality, and natural resources. I believe the RFP and scoring criteria honors that commitment in the following ways. First, during the solid waste management plan process, the SWAC specifically added new language addressing climate change. These values are reflected throughout the request for proposal and in the priorities identified for proposal review, specifically in criteria number one and criteria number three that are related to plans for transportation, alternate operations, environmental protection, and emergency response and alignment of approach with county goals and objectives. Additionally, the solid waste management plan is heavily focused on sustainability, as you have already heard, and doing it in a cost-effective way. This value is reflected through the request for proposal, but especially in the criteria for evaluation, particularly criterion number three, which relates to transport mode and distance, equipment standards, landfill gas, and energy recovery. And now if I may step away from my role with the SWAC for just a moment and speak as a taxpayer and ratepayer in Thurston County, um, I, I have to admit my views on this topic are heavily swayed by my service on the SWAC. So thank you once again for that opportunity. I wish everybody in the county could do it. Uh, but the prevailing respondent, Republic Services, will be transporting primarily by rail to its landfill, which reduces truck miles and resulting emissions. Rail transport is three to four times more fuel efficient than trucks, which means moving our waste by rail will reduce our overall gas emissions significantly. The Roosevelt Regional Landfill has the largest and most technologically advanced gas to energy facilities in the Northwest. For more than 20 years, the site has been in a public-private partnership with the Klickitat County Public Utilities District to produce clean, renewable energy, and in 2019 opened a state-of-the-art renewable natural gas facility that provides additional environmental benefits by better utilizing the methane created from the landfill. The Klickitat PUD recently signed a new 20-year agreement with Puget Sound Energy that will allow the utility to use this source of gas right here in Thurston County. The Roosevelt landfill is presently capturing 95 to 97 percent of the gas it generates through the use of nearly 300 gas wells. Wells. By the way, I hope you've all had a chance to visit the Roosevelt Landfill. If you haven't, I highly encourage it. It is a remarkable site, an example of smart management and the use of technology to mitigate environmental impacts, and it's a wonderful, wonderful educational opportunity. And I think I'm done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, so Evan Brady and next is uh, Josh Shaw. Good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, my name is Evan Brady, uh, 922 East Johns Prairie Road, Shelton, Washington. Um, with my wife, Ashley, who is here today, I'm co-owner of Brady Trucking Company in Shelton. Um, I'm here to testify, testify in support of Republic Services' selection to operate the solid waste transfer station system for Thurston County. Uh, we are partnering with Republic Services on the organic waste portion of the solid waste contract. Um, I'd like to give you a brief history of our company, uh, including our history in recycling and composting organic materials. 
um, as well as our current and future expansion of our commercial composting facility. Um, our company was started by my father 40 years ago this May um, with two trucks hauling sawmill byproducts, uh, uh, mainly pulp chips and bark. He had the foresight to manufacture bark that was otherwise being landfilled and burned into finished landscape products. We have become one of the largest wholesale beauty, beauty bark manufacturers in Washington State. Today we operate uh, 20 trucks, 30 trailers, as well as grinders, screens, loaders, excavators to support our manufacturing facility. Um, we have uh, our products supply hundreds of locations in, in uh, Washington State, uh, including our retail facilities in Shelton and, and Squim. Uh, almost 20 years ago, we began recycling residential green waste and composting under a solid waste permit issued by Mason County Health Department. We have remained in good standing with Mason, Mason County Health and have always passed inspections without violation. Uh, with our increasing need of organic compost, we hired Green Mountain Technologies to aid in design and permitting a more robust facility, one that will allow us to add Thurston County's organics to our current feedstocks. Uh, we are w investing over $2 million in this commercial composting facility. Um, we look forward to working with Thurston County and Republic Ser Services on composting organics uh, to reduce organic waste going to landfills and further improving soils in our region. Um, and Rick Longendon from uh, Green Mountain Technologies is here as well to comment about our uh, design and permitting. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so next I have Josh Shaw and uh, Rick uh, Rick is next. I, I, I do not want to butcher your name. I apologize. Good okay. afternoon, Commissioners. My name is Josh Shaw. I'm the General Manager for Washington Post Collections with Republic Services. Um, so first and foremost, we are humbled and excited to uh, be the county's choice and preferred partner uh, as we move into this new contract. Um, I want to congratulate Jennifer and her team for a very transparent and uh, successful process negotiations over the last several months. And so thank you for that. Uh, we've had a relationship and a partnership with Thurston County for the last 25 years, uh, so we're excited to see what the next 10 to 20 years brings us. Um, you know, it was mentioned before, you know, Thurston County is our second largest disposal contract uh, at Roosevelt, and so it allows us to keep our 200 plus union employees employed with a livable wage uh, down there in Klickitat County. Um, it's vital. Uh, to the economic health of that county. So on behalf of the 200 plus employees and the, the commissioners in Klickitat County, thank you for this recommendation. Uh, during the negotiations, the ability to listen to and determine and evaluate solutions was an indication of a mutual respect and a healthy partnership. Uh, we have come to an agreement that benefits the ratepayers of Thurston County, and we are also excited to assume the operations there at the, at the work. Um, where we intend to hire as many current employees there as possible. Again, we're humbled, appreciative by this selection and are eager to go to work uh, come May 1st, 2023. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rick, you're next. And then uh, on deck, I have Phyllis Farrell. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rick Longenden. As Evan mentioned, I'm with uh, Green Mountain Technologies. We're based on Bainbridge Island. And as Evan mentioned, um, we came into the project um, after Evan and actually decided to move forward with the composting. And what I would like to do is just give you just a real overview of the purpose and need in terms of the composting. I think everyone seems to be pretty convinced that it's the right way to go, but just to give some background. Um, one aspect is that there is really a, a, a need, an overarching need for compost in, in, this, in this county. And we, you know, again, what we have right now is the facilities are basically at capacity. So there's really a need for having Brady actually be able to perform that need. Um, and also the, in terms of the, um, in terms of the process going forward, just want to give you the overarching least perspective on where we are in terms of status. Uh, we were engaged to back in May. We started with a preliminary design for the facility. Uh, we very quickly moved into a pre-application process with Mason County. 
and then submitted a SEPA checklist, uh, which was very quickly uh, approved, at least within the time frame, of course. But we only had a couple of very minor, minor comments. Actually, had a supporting comments from the Squaxin uh, tribe, and then just a couple of minor comments from Department of, of Ecology. And we got determination of non-significance uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, in terms of then uh, moving forward, we have then, of course, addressed the air-related issues. Quite often, in composting facilities, odor is, is in, a topic that comes up. We had an engaging uh, Ramble uh, group, which is a very accomplished air modeling uh, uh, service that we have here in, within, the, within the area. They performed a robust analysis, and we submitted our application then to ORCA just about a month ago. Um, in terms of uh, the process going forward, we're in the, we are working on the final construction design drawings right now. We'll be submitting those next month. And then we also have uh, a building fabrication. So the, one of the key points of the project is that we don't want to have any, uh, any the discharge of any contaminants from the site. So we're controlling that by controlling the leachate on the, on the facility by having a covered structure. Uh, that is a major investment for the Brady's to make that happen. Uh, but because of it, then we're able to reduce the impact, or actually fully mitigate the impact on, on the site. And that, that building is in fabrication uh, as we speak. And then we're looking at construction uh, starting as soon as June or July of this year. And I have to say, just as I have a couple seconds here, um, one of the things I've been doing this kind of work for a long time in terms of permitting related work. And I have to say, I. I walked away from the different meetings we've had with different regulators and from the public, and I've never experienced a project where we've had this much support by all parties uh, going forward. And I think it's a good thing to know from the commissioner's perspective of what, what that really means. And I think also to, to bring it into context in terms of the solid waste, um, it, you know, from my perspective, what's great about it is that by keeping the food waste out of the solid waste facilities, we actually make more room for the real solid waste we need to be able to store. And those things are all a win-win-win from my perspective. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, and after we will move to Zoom. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Phyllis Farrell. I live in the Sunwood Lakes neighborhood in unincorporated Thurston County. And thank you for the opportunity um, to speak in support of the contract with Republic Services for Waste Management. Um, I became familiar with Republic Services several years ago when Steve Gilmore, uh, their representative, spoke at, made a presentation at our local Sierra Club meeting. And at that time, I was really impressed with their uh, sustainability practices, including transportation by rail, you've heard about that, um, trucks utilizing uh, compressed uh, renewable natural gas, and the methane capture at their landfill in Klickitat County, uh, powering local homes. Additionally, they have a state-of-the-art liner there that prevents that leachate that you heard about um, entering uh, local soils and groundwater. Uh, additionally, uh, Republic Services has been a climate leader in support of uh, climate legislation, uh, such as the Clean Fuel Standard, uh, Climate Commitment Act, and um, reduce, bills aimed at reducing methane emissions from landfills. Their company policies of um, goals of reducing greenhouse gas emissions align with our Thurston Climate Mitigation Plan. Uh, locally, they've been good partners. They were a major sponsor in the climate conventions that some of you attended. And they have also supported and partnered with us in educational events, uh, uh, environmental educational events here locally. Uh, I support Republic Services for their work, and I hope uh, you will approve this contract. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, County Manager, we call. Uh, Zoom? Yep. Thank you. So I will be calling by name based on the order that I have in my Zoom screen. Uh, uh, please admit yourself when I call your name. You have four minutes. Uh, first, I have Mr. and Mrs. I. Payne.
Okay, let me, let me move on to the next, Mr. James Hutchinson. Uh, next, I have uh, Mr. Jay Donovan. Thank you. Uh, next, I have Mr. Jeffrey Cage. Oh, Gage, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, next, I have Mr. Jim Cooper. Thank you, Romero, and thank you, Chair Mejia and Commissioner e Commissioners Edwards and Commissioner Menser. I'm Jim Cooper uh, from the Olympia City Council. Uh, today, I'm not representing our city, though. I just want to make that clear. I'm also the uh, immediate past chair of your Solid Waste Advisory Committee. And I'd like to start out uh, similar to how the commissioners uh, were after the presentation in just thanking your stellar staff team. The, the contract you have sitting in front of you is because of one of the best staff teams in government that I have seen. Uh, you have really created something special here. And my story begins three years ago, joining the Solid Waste Advisory Committee and that not being the case. In fact, the Solid Waste Committee and the staff were at loggerheads regularly, uh, unclear about the ex expectations of either party. And, and, and so to see this uh, here now is pretty significant. And let me just add a little bit more to that story. Uh, fast forward one year, I became the chair of the Solid Waste Advisory Committee. Um, we were working to uh, move forward on finalizing the solid waste management plan that had been processed in process for quite some time, looking at uh, the extensions of the current contract and getting the RFP out. And uh, this, the committee and the staff just dug in to make sure that we were getting the best product for the county and for you and the, and the taxpayers and, and the residents um, and the pandemic hit. And we kept it going. We, we did the, uh, the solid waste management plan by Zoom, which I don't think I ever expected to spend so much time on Zoom with this group of people, but you got a good product out of it. And I'm, I'm really proud to, to, to stand here, to rise in support today. Um, the, the process as has been spoken about was transparent uh, to the bidders, the SWAC and the community. You got a good price, you're saving some money and uh, it really is a contract that is in alignment with your values, your goals, the needs of the community, and it's good for the planet. So um, I, I ask you to support this, uh, this, this contract as you move ahead. And then lastly, I just like to, to point out one, uh, one opportunity, and, and I hate to, to make a critique, but it was very difficult to find the link for the public hearing. There's no link to the public hearing Zoom or the materials in the county commissioner's agenda or on the agenda website. So I, I just wanted to point that out in case you didn't know, it, it is really hard when you're looking at the agenda to be able to find the public hearing links as well. So, but I really appreciate your service and, and thank you for letting me speak today. Um, thank you. Next, I have uh, Mr. Joel Hansen. Thank you, Ramiro, and uh, thank you. Chair Mejia, Commissioners Menzer and Commissioner Edwards. Uh, my name is Joel Hansen. I live at 625 73rd Avenue Southeast in Tumwater, and I'm speaking in favor of this contract. Um, I first learned of the Roosevelt Regional Landfill uh, when reviewing the Thurston Climate Mitigation Plan, where it was uh, held up as a story of success for their, for their uh, climate work. Um, and as luck would have it, I was able to tour the Roosevelt Regional Landfill just last Friday um, to take a look at the facility uh, and its potential for solar energy as they're continuing to look to uh, lead in, in uh, the decisions they make uh, with regard to the climate and, and looking at generating electricity on site. Um, I think when most people hear the word landfill, an image comes to mind of a big hole in the ground where you throw garbage. And I would say that this facility is, is nothing like that. It truly is a state-of-the-art uh, facility. And the level of planning and engineering that went into its 
design, construction, and operations is truly remarkable. Um, at every step along the way on our tour, um, it was clear that Republic has voluntarily chosen to uh, go above and beyond the environmental protection standards that are required of them. And uh, I, won't, I won't belabor the point, but I'll mention just three quick things that, that stood out to me. The entire facility of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of acres is designed to drain all of the leachate into a series of ponds at the lower end, uh, what I think would be the, the southeast end of the facility, where then that liquid is collected and pumped back to the top of the facility to drain back through and aid in the decomposition of uh, the material and the production of the methane that they capture. Um, I think it was mentioned there are nearly 300 uh, methane capture sites. And when we were there, it was pointed out that most of those are now uh, in a partnership with a, with a tech startup are now fitted with um, high tech uh, new, um, I, I'll call them wellhead monitors uh, that, that are remotely monitored and able to be uh, very uh, carefully controlled to aid in making sure that all of the methane is captured and that no additional uh, uh, surrounding air and nitrogen is being sucked into the system. It's, it's pretty incredible what they're doing. Um, and then uh, finally, the, the third thing that I thought was really cool while we were there is a, a means of biosecurity. They employ a falconer to chase off all the seagulls. And uh, the couple of hours that we, that we were there, we didn't see a single seagull because the falcon was up there circling uh, the site and keeping them away and keeping them from taking trash from the facility and, and, and spreading it around the, the area. So uh, I'm speaking in support of the, of the uh, contract and I thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Next on the list, I have Mr. John Pettit. Yes, this is John Pettit. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead, sir. Okay, well, I want to, uh, I want to certainly acknowledge that uh, everything sounds very, very good. And uh, it's very interesting. I, I do think there's one notable thing, though, that should be pointed out is over the term of the contract, the 10-year contract, uh, it, it, and costs go up, there's no question. But um, when you take the 3% and you keep adding them up and each year, uh, there was only one, actually it's two and a half up to three. Uh, the rest were all 3% increases. Uh, you're gonna end up having a 34.4% increase in cost in the contract. Uh, which, which I have to believe that that's going to ultimately raise the price of uh, the services for uh, solid waste by probably at least 30% over the next 10 years, which is a, still a very substantial uh, increase. Um, I don't have a lot of other things to say. I mean, obviously the site over there is, is considered good. Uh, solid waste is is big business and a lot of people make a lot of money and uh but and the service that's actually being done is basically uh a sub a subcontracting of service that the county uh would possibly you know be uh doing themselves but you're hiring a company to do the work that uh potentially the county would be doing uh, the actual disposal of the waste product uh, that was being done even by the current contractor to the same location. So uh, once again, I just think that the caveat here is uh, no, I mean, granted, we're maybe saving money from the current contract, but let's make sure the citizens know that um, over the next 10 year period, they can expect uh, probably a 30 to 34% increase in the solid waste rates from where it's at today. That's all, thank you. Thank you, sir. Next on the list, I have Ms. Lois um, Ward. Ms. 
Next, I have Mr. Nick Harbert. Um, thank you. I have no comments. Thank you, sir. Uh, next, I have Ms. Uh, Ruby Urban. I have no comments. Thank you. Last but not least on my list is Mr. Steve um, Segal. Thank you. Uh, my name is Steve Siegel. I'm vice president of the Thurston Lewis Mason Central Labor Council. We represent 20,000 workers in Thurston Lewis and Mason counties uh, who belong to labor unions, uh, whose uh, wages, uh, whose union wages pay the tax, make up the large bulk of the taxpayer dollars that are received by Thurston County. I want to commend the county and the county staff for the uh, robust and diligent process that they have undergone in uh, getting these bids for a, uh, a long-term uh, contract that benefits the citizens of Thurston County. Uh, it's been uh, robust and thorough. Uh, it saves apparently one to two million dollars a year over the current contract. Um, there's nothing wrong about that. And I think it's a testament to the work that Republic Services has done and the union labor that they employ. Uh, I've personally visited the site, uh, I'm impressed with their operations there, and more impressed with the long-term planning that goes into management of a landfill. Uh, this is a um, generational 50 to 100 year plan. Uh, when you plan that far ahead, you can be efficient uh, in your management and your process. When you use union labor, you save money. Um, so it is environmentally sound, not just for today, but for the future. Uh, it supports working families uh, in both Clickitat County and in Thurston County. Uh, it's good for the environment. It's good for the taxpayers in the county, and it's good for working families. I strongly urge you to approve this contract. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I do have one more, and I don't know if Dr. Demianel Demalek would like to provide testimony to have you on the list. Doctor? Um, I would not like to provide testimony. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, that will conclude public testimony, Madam Chair. Okay. Going once, going twice. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you uh, to all who provided uh, testimony um, with that. Uh, commissioners, anything you would like to discuss? Commissioner Edwards? No, I, I don't believe so. I think there's more to come somewhere down the pike here, somewhere. Commissioner Menser? Nope, just whatever our next step is. Okay. And so, with that, um, our next step, it seems, is to close the public hearing. Yeah, we will uh, schedule a follow-up uh, briefing and that will give the board the opportunity to weigh in the public testimony you have received. And at that point, I will ask the board what will be uh, uh, the next steps from your point of view. Okay. So. I'll move to close the public hearing. Second. Okay. Uh, further discussion on that? No, oh, ma'am. I'll call for the vote. Commissioner Edwards. Aye. Commissioner Mincer. Aye. Commissioner Mejia. Aye. Hearing is closed. Thank you all. Commissioners, we have one more public hearing, and uh, Ramiro will it be in a different Zoom. Yes. Okay.
Good afternoon. This is a public hearing in regards to proposed ordinance to expand the Board of Health. It is Tuesday, March 22nd, 2022. It is 4.05 p.m. Um, the purpose of this public hearing uh, is to accept and consider public comment related to the proposed ordinance regarding Thurston County Court Code, Chapter 207, expanding the composition of the Board of Health and adopting provisions consistent with RCW 70.05. I am Carolina Mejia, Chair of the Board. I am joined uh, today uh, to my uh, left is Commissioner Gary Edwards. To my right is Vice Chair Ty Menser. Uh, to his right is County Manager Ramiro Chavez, uh, as well as the Clerk of the Board, Amy Davis. We are joined online by, um, or via Zoom, not online, I apologize, uh, by other staff members as well as members of the public. This is a hybrid public hearing. Those wishing to testify have joined in person by Zoom, emailed in comment, or mailed in comment. If you wish to testify, please sign up on the sheet near the doors. Visit the Thurston County homepage online and select announcements of public hearings on the left-hand side. The information to join this public hearing remotely has been posted there. If you do not wish to testify but would like to listen and follow along, please watch the live stream through the Thurston County YouTube channel to help us manage attendance. Ramiro Chavez, County Manager, will provide information on this topic. The County Manager will read the names listed on the sign-up sheet. Assuming those on Zoom wish to testify, the County Manager will read your name out loud. You will have four minutes to testify. Time may not be given to another person. When you are called on, please state your name and address uh, address for the record. So with that, the public hearing is now open. Uh, Ramiro Chavez, our county manager, will now present background <coughs> information about this matter, posting requirements, written comments submitted, and any additional information requested by the board. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, during the 2021 legislative session, the Engrow Second Substitute House Bill 1152 uh, was passed and enacted into law, amending RCW 70.05.030. Uh, this particular bill it had uh, two uh, main components related to the comprehensive health services districts. One uh, uh, created the public health advisory board, and that is at the state level. And the, the State Department of Health needs to create this board that has many prescriptive uh, representation within this board. And this particular board <clears throat> will report directly to the governor's office. The second element of the in growth, second, second substitute 1152 really is related to local boards of health. So in addition to the members of the local board of health, each board must include members from the following three categories that are selected uh, consistent with the state uh, board rules. It has to be a representative from a public health practitioner, which includes employee of, of healthcare facility, a healthcare provider, which includes medical, uh, uh, facilities, epidemiologists, individual experience, and environmental public health, such as registered sanitarians, uh, community health workers, and many others uh, listed. The second element is uh, include customers, consumers of public health, which includes residents who have self-identified as having uh, faced significant health inequalities, inequities, as having lived experiences with public health uh, related programs. The third is uh, other community stakeholders, which cons consist of uh, persons representing the following types of organizations. Community-based organizations or nonprofits that work with populations experiencing health inequities in the county, active, reserve, or retired armed services members, the business community, or the environmental uh, public health uh, regulatory community. also includes a representative from a federal recognized Indian tribe. The representation of the Indian tribe was, uh, is, is intended to be selected by the American Indian Health Commission at the state level. Also, the, this particular uh, legislat legislation includes the number of members of selected from the three categories, and the tribal representatives, if required, must equal the number of city and county elected officials on the board and that is important. None of the two representations, elected officials and community members can, uh, in, in terms of the number has to be equal. 
and also uh, it states that uh, it must be a chair they have to serve for a period of one year on the new board of health that is the overall umbrella of the of the uh, of the engrossed second substitute uh, house bill 1152 which amended rcw 70.0530 uh, the ordinance uh, uh, before you, uh, in which this public hearing is intended to, to serve, uh, it states the Board of County Commissioners decides to, decides to increase the Board of Health to eight uh, members, effective July 1st, 2022. They requires, uh, they includes representation by cities, tribes, and individuals representing the public health and other stakeholders. It also states the, uh, the State uh, uh, Board of Health intends to pass the uh, uh, a ruling on uh, amending the Washington is, is Administrative Code 246.90. This particular uh, uh, rulemaking will be taken in place on July 25th, 2022. And the ordinance that we have provided uh, before you includes some of the initial elements of, the, of, the, of this particular uh, rulemaking. So the Board of Health, uh, on, uh, including this proposed ordinance, uh, it speaks about the appointments in terms of services. The Board of Health uh, shall consist, consist of eight members who are residents of Thurston County and include the following, county and city elected officials. Three members of the Board of County Commissioners will serve as such, as you currently have serving as the Board of Health. One member who is a city elected official selected on a rotating basis from Lacey, Olympia, Tumwater, and Yelm, the largest jur jurisdictions in the county. Beginning with Lacey, followed by Olympia, Tumwater, and Yelm, in this order thereafter. The city elected official sh shall serve a term of two years and until the successor is selected. And it speaks about the vacancy in an unexpired term shall be filled in the same manner as the original selection. Uh, this ordinance speaks about the tribal representative, one member who is a tribal representative selected by the American Indian Health Commission. This member shall serve a term of three years, continuing until the successor is appointed, and also may serve on one additional consecutive three-year term. The healthcare and community providers the three members are approved and appointed by the majority of the vote by the Board of County Commissioners. The members shall not be elected officials and must be selected to meet the criteria consistent with uh, the RCW 7005.03018A uh, in uh, Washington Administrative Code Chapter 246-290. Each member uh, shall serve a uh, term of three years, continuing until a successor is appointed, and the Board of County Commissioners may approve reappointment of any additional consecutive three years. And again, uh, specific to the, to the requirement, this ordinance outlines uh, the uh, potential members representing the public health uh, care uh, facilities and providers which is uh, prescriptive in terms of the medical uh, personnel, the epidemiologists, as I stated before, um, as part of the uh, 1152. It also speaks about the members representing the, cons uh, the consumers of public health. This category consists of county residents who are uh, self-identified as having faced significant health inequ inequities and having lived experiences with public health-related programs such as the Special Supplement Nutrition Program for Women, infants and children. And also uh, this particular term will be for three years. And uh, the last uh, outline is the uh, member representing other community stakeholders. They consist of person representing the following types of organizations, community-based organizations, nonprofits, active, uh, active, reserve, or retired armed forces members, the business community, and the environmental health, public health regulated community. This ordinance also outlines the process in terms of removal and vacancies. Vacancies in the Board of Health positions appointed by the Board of County Commissioners shall be filled by appoint, appointment within 30 days. I'm as made as the matter as the original appointment. The removal. Any member may be removed by majority vote of the Board of County Commissioners. 
no member shall be removed during his or, his or her term of appointment unless or for cause of incapacitation, incompetence, neglect of duty, malfeasance while serving on the Board of Health. Meetings. The Board of Health shall conduct its meetings in accordance to Chapter 42.30 of the RCW, which are governed by the Open Public Meetings Act. The Board of Health shall establish a regular meeting schedule and may adopt rules and procedures as necessary to perform their duties. It speaks about the quorum. Quorum shall be the majority of the members holding positions on the Board of Health, not including vacancies. And then it speaks about the selection of officers. The Board of Health shall elect uh, from its members a chair that, who will serve a period of uh, one year and shall thereafter select a chair on an annual basis. The Board may elect other officers and may adopt uh, rules and procedures. The Board of Health also may appoint an administrative officer. The administrative officer shall be as an executive secretary administrative officer for the Board of Health and shall be responsible for administering the operations of the Board of Health, including such other administrative duties required by the Board, except for the duties assigned to the uh, Health Officer, as stated in RCW 7005070 and other applicable laws. That is in jest as to the uh, encapsulating this particular public hearing, and I'm open for questions if you have any. Questions, Commissioner Edwards. I don't see anybody knocking the door down, so I'll take just a second. On uh, the quorum issue, so as a board of uh, health, two of the county commissioners could visit about a particular topic if that uh, was needed, very much like a city council gets to do so now, right? Is that is the, correct, but also remember you will be serving as a Board of County Commissioner. Right. right, but I just wonder if, because that's been a hindrance yeah. you know, on some occasions. So if it's a I matter, if, if, I would assume if it's a matter of, uh, of a public health related matters, yeah. I believe so. Right. Yeah, um, that's a good, then good point. Maybe another piece of that is, uh, have you heard anybody talking about you know, because we were thinking of trying to keep it small to start with, especially, you know, kind of until we get going. So was, has there ever been any discussion about maybe just two of the members from the Board of County Commissioners serving, for an example, one city council person serving, and then you'd only need six? Uh, uh, you may not be able to do that because it's very prescriptive that you need uh, three uh, okay. uh, uh, members of uh, the community as uh, outlined the, two, uh, uh, the three specific categories plus one tribal representative. Oh, okay. So that will make it I four. just wondered if that might that will make it four. Trying to make it easy for you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that concludes. So that's my how that, that's how the ordinance proposes eight members. That's okay. the the least that uh, the I believe the staff can propose in order to meet the intent of the law. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Okay, I, two things, and again, I kind of support the eight, so I'm not trying to undermine it, but just to flesh out Commissioner Edwards' question, one thing is you don't have to have more as many elect. Like you could have seven. Even under your interpretation, you could have seven by just having four non-electeds and three electeds. It's just that you can't have more electeds than non-electeds. They don't have to be an equal number. You can have more non-electeds. Yes. So that's a possibility. That would make it seven. Now, there is flexibility in the law, that, ha and I don't know if there's a minimum of those three buckets, but I know that at least when you're in a higher numbers, you don't have to have, like, it's okay to have two from one bucket and one from the other two if you don't, you know, as long as you don't have three from one bucket and only one. I, I was explaining it to the public. It's like monopoly. It's like houses on monopoly. You know, you can put more than one house, but then the next house has to go into the next into the next property. It's like that with the three buckets. So, so I don't know if you wanted to do six, could you just have two, two buckets and leave one bucket empty because 
you're only going to have two, but there, there probably is a minimum of three. Yes, and I think, uh, let me read this, I wanted to avoid this confusing part of the statute, yeah. uh, but it speaks about what you are stating, and I think we, the, the, the county has to make a, a, a good effort to recruit from all the three buckets. Okay. But it states that if there are um, one or two members of the nearest multiple of three, those members may be selected from any other three categories. However, if the board demonstrate that it attempted, uh, attempted to recruit members from all three categories and was unable to do so, the board may select members only from the other two categories. So what it says is we make a considered effort to recruit from all the three categories. If we don't have a representative, allows the board to have uh, another representative from the other category. But it does want three community reps, period. Yeah. yeah. I guess you can only thing you could do to go smaller would be to have one county commissioner and that one is, city that rep. Is, that is my interpretation. And one tribal rep and three citizens, then you'd only have six. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, my question is in regards to uh, the appointment in terms of service, um, where it says the three members of the Board of County Commissioners. I was wondering if instead it could just say three members because just in case we get through and get five, you know, at least it's prescriptive and, and just seen into the future, I wouldn't have to change. I'm looking at the end of page one, uh, right? The last sentence that has a, a one on it, okay. and it says the three instead of, I'm wondering if it instead could just say three members of the Board of County Commissioners. Yeah, yeah take the the out. Yep. And then that way, you you open for opportunities in the future. That's what yeah. you're saying. Yeah, it wouldn't be out of date. It wouldn't have to be revised. I, just, yeah, just uh, I, I'm just I'm just hopeful. <laughs> so uh, that's a good conversation. And and yeah, uh, three members of the board of county commission is good good option. And, and then um, my second questions in regard to point two on the next page on the top, um, and then one member who's a city elected official. Um, and, and I was wondering how that order came into play where it's Lacey, Olympia, Tumwater, and Yelm, was it? Population, uh, Shelly Slaughter told me it was based on the population. population. Okay. Lacey's the biggest, they go first, and we're going down the population chain. Is Lacey the biggest? I thought Olympia. I Olympia. Yeah. Oh, yep. <laughs> I thought Olympia had gone back on top. <laughs> it, was, it was kind of back and forth for a little bit, yeah. so I wasn't, I wasn't sure. Yeah, that, um, was, that, was, that was intentional, based on population. So it's based on population, okay. Okay, those are my questions. Any additional questions, Commissioners? Questions. No. Okay, with that. And uh, Jane Federman is here to answer any questions. I'm sorry, I, I, I was looking at the commissions, uh, didn't see you, Jane. Any additional perspective you'd like to add on this, Jane? I Actually, I would like to just briefly address the issue of the county commissioners. Um, so the statute does provide that the members will include the Board of County Commissioners. So there really is not an option to reduce how many county commissioners are on the Board of Health, um, because as, as members of the Board of County Commissioners, you, you are members of the Board of Health. Um, so there isn't, a re, there isn't an option to reduce, but the other thing I was gonna say is, even if the Board of County Commissioners increases to five, the reason what in drafting this that I put in the three members is because of that issue of having um, not more electeds than um, the appointed members and community members. And so if the, our, our makeup of the Board of County Commissioners were to increase, then there would be a greater number of elected officials than appointed members on the on this board. And so there would be a necessity to amend the ordinance anyway. And so okay. um, for You're that purpose, I point. didn't see a reason to, to, to just say the county commissioners, it made, made sense to me to just put in th three at this point with the idea that it, this, the ordinance may need to be amended based on future action, future changes in the board of county commissioners. Uh, unless, you t unless you changed I item C and said, instead of three members, you could say the number of members corresponding to the number mm -hmm. of county commissioners or something. Just 
more complex now, but save us an amendment later. I don't know. Uh, maybe just members of the Board of County Commissioners. That will come. Right. Up. Well, right, I'm going, but I'm saying to get away from what Jane's saying is like, then if we go to five, then you have to have two more citizens. You know, uh, when we go to five, optimistic, you made to revisit, revisit many, many ordinances and resolutions, and this will be one of them. Mm. Okay. All right. So be, be, it, it will it have to be, uh, uh, at this point, I, I think is a reality. So I have a follow up for that chain. So you're saying that, okay, again, optimistic, optimistic and futuristic conversation. If we were to go to five, right, um, then all those five members would have to be, and then we would have to increase the board of health to how many people to like 12, 14? Yep. Well, there would, so, right, because, because, because another elected with, official the one, yeah. with the one city council member, be 12. that would be six, elect, six elected members, so then you'd need, right, just six, uh, six yeah. non-elected. Yeah. They might do cleanup on this legislation like they've done on the other legislation. <laughs> Sometimes. So we hope. Okay. Thank you for that uh, clarification. Um, okay. <sighs> we might need a bigger boardroom. Just, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> just and, and if I may, um, we are planning at the 3000 Pacific to have, to have a, uh, a dais that may include close to 10 chairs. Okay, with that, if there's no additional questions, comments, we'll move to public testimony. And there's uh, no one in the boardroom, so no. just Zoom. Yeah, and I think I have uh, Mr. Jim Cooper, yeah. would like to provide testimony. Thanks, Romero, no testimony. Thank you. Uh, uh, Dr. Demiana Abdemalek, would you like to provide testimony? Um, I did not want to provide a public testimony, okay. but thank, thank you. you. Okay. Uh, any discussion, commissioners? No more discussion with me, ma'am. Okay. Uh, that. I move to close the public hearing. I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion? I'll call for the vote. Commissioner Edwards. Aye. Commissioner Menser. Aye. Commissioner Mejia. Aye. Okay, county manager, next up. So based on the public testimony that you received on the last two public hearings, I will bring those two items on Tuesday morning uh, to um, see where the board would like to go. Okay, thank you. We are adjourned and we will be picking up with the Board of Health. Here short. Thank you, Jane.